Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the studio. Happy Sunday. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and this is Clay Share. We have got a fantabulous kiln opening. I was just chatting, you know, before I start these broadcasts, I, I also have this live on Instagram. So usually it takes us between three to five minutes to actually hook in and get all the streams set up and, you know, collect them all together. And in that time, I hang out with the folks over at Instagram and we just chat and I just share some little candid things and, and we just talk a bit. But what we're gonna do in here is open this kiln and you're gonna see all of these great combos. Now there's a bunch of Amico and Mako glazes. There's a lot of layering with Amico glazes on Mako and Mako glazes on Amico. I also did a bunch of test tubes. They're like little extruded tubes that I use as test tiles of my own glazes, which some are available from Clayscapes Pottery right now but I have two new ones coming out for pre-order next month, my Cranberry and my Oribe, and I have some tests of those in this as well, and a, a few sneak peeks of new classes coming down the line for Clay Share this fall. All right, so you guys ready? We're gonna jump right in. Um, today in my life is demo day, not demonstrating how to make something day, but demolition day. We are ripping off the front the entryway porch of our home. We have a three season porch that is part of our home and Kevin and I are ripping it off ourselves. We've got most of it ripped off. So we're ripping it all off and building a brand new entryway porch that will become a mudroom and a dining, a little dinette. We're gonna put a little dining booth out there. So it'll be really cute and I'll share pictures along the way, but the two of us are doing it ourselves. We've done plenty of work on our homes. This is our third home we've owned most of them are, this one's built in 1850. Uh, our last one was 18, 1790. We did have one from 1960 once we owned, but still, we, we are used to the DIY life. So I'll be um, doing that for today and tomorrow, building a new porch, very exciting. All right, let's open it up and we'll go through everything. I got my notebook, so we'll talk. If you have questions, ask, I will answer them. So let's get, let's get in the kiln so I can go pull the porch down some more. <laughs> I know, demo day. Oh. All right, so let's always start with the cone pack. I never do a glaze firing without one of these because this is the true like litmus test, right? This is the thing that gives me all my information. So if we look at it, cone four, cone five, cone six. This was a cone five firing. Oh, we got the cone five, very nice. And what I like to do is I like to write on the bottom of these the date that it was fired. So it was the second that I fired this. And this is the top. And I'm just going to write cone 5. So I write this information on the bottom so that I have this as a reference. And I will keep this for, uh, I don't know, for the next five firings or so. I keep them in a row on the shelf behind me. You can kind of see this is one from my last firing. And that way I can compare. Ooh. Let's look, this was from a firing a couple weeks ago, today's firing. That looks pretty consistent to me. So firing evenly and consistently is important because that lets you um, know if your glazes are gonna turn out the same as they did last time. If your kiln starts firing hotter or cooler, your glazes won't look the same. So that's, that's something to know your kiln and know how it fires. Everybody's excited, everybody's here. Oh, I know, mmm, cone packs. Good morning from Georgia. Good morning everywhere. So uh, some personal things that we give up on our farm. No, some of you know, so we own our home here and we have chickens and we, we have a, a small piece of land. We've been looking for a farm. We looked at one, it didn't work out. Found another farm. It was going great. And then at the last, well, I won't say last minute, but we put our offer in and they were gonna accept our offer. And then Another person put a verbal offer in for significantly more than ours, which ours was over the asking price for this other property. This was just last week and we lost it. So right now, trying to buy property, it's horrible. I think we're gonna stop looking for a while because the market is not good. Everybody is selling houses for significantly more than the asking price and it's very competitive. And I live in rural Vermont and housing in Vermont is not that expensive, it's really not. But for those of us who live here, it's, it can be. But if you move from an from a urban area, you can sell your little condo or something in the city for probably double what you can buy a house here. 
So I can't compete with that. So we might stop. Thank you for asking. Um, I will keep you all updated if we find a farm, but we're looking. It's a process, right? All right, let's get into the kiln. No, no more talking about that. All right, so right off the bat, we have some examples of my Oribe. This is my grass green glaze, I like to call it. It's a translucent glaze, and on the rim, I just put red iron oxide. I just went ahead and did a layer of that, just water, red iron oxide, and you just paint that on, and then you put your glaze on top. But look at that beautiful rim you get. Yep, I know. So don't feel sad about the farms. It's the second property we've lost this month. It's crazy right now. Don't worry, we're just gonna stay in our home through the winter and next spring we'll look again. It's fine. So we're doing things like ripping off our porch and updating it and probably gonna put a new roof, things that we would wanna do anyways to sell it. So it's not a big deal. It's all right. This is, you know, you can't always get what you want. It's just how it is. You just gotta keep going. I know it's disappointing. Believe me, it's, it's not been all sunshine and roses, but it's life. We gotta, and how can we be sad when we have such gorgeous glazes in the kiln, right? So more of my Oribe, because I really wanted to illustrate how great it is on texture. Red iron oxide brushed on the rim and then dipped in my Oribe. The pattern here is my B rolling pin. Just a little hex plate, just a cute little plate. And then I did one where I double dipped. So I wanted to show the difference. Single dip, double dip. I also applied red iron oxide to this side and wiped back. So you can see the difference. So Robin mixed up my chun blue and it's too thin. So what you need to do Robin is let it set and settle down and then skim some of that water off the top. The chun blue really needs to be thick, like heavy cream. You really want it to be thicker to get good results. It's a fluffy glaze, we like to say. All right, what else do we have? So we have got, this is my cobblestone, which you can get currently from Clayscapes Pottery. That's the gray. And then on the inside, on the, just on the outside of the rim is my spearmint. So I wanted to do a double dip to see how it looked. So I dipped it once in cobblestone and then I dipped it again in spearmint. So you get this really nice, beautiful, like sea foamy, green, blue, gray on top of that cobblestone. How sweet is that? Really nice glaze if you're making dinnerware or like foodware, stuff that's gonna be used a lot because it feels nice and it wears really well. Plus I did do the lemon test with both these glazes and it passed with flying colors. Now the lemon test, what it does is when you put a, a slice of lemon on a piece of pottery, usually you do it on a plate, and you let it set for at least 12 hours, and when you remove the lemon, you look at the glaze and you see if it's been etched at all. And what that tells us is that that particular glaze is gonna react to an acid food. And is it a problem? It's not a definitive answer for yes, your glaze is not food safe. It just tells you that the glaze is affected by acids. Some glazes it's fine, some glazes it could be a little kind of a signal for an issue. But right here, these have no problems with lemon. And really, lemon is probably one of the strongest acids you're gonna put in your food, right? Like, you're not putting like other acids in your mugs, I hope because that would be bad. And then another combo that I haven't done in a long time, but it's still gorgeous. Now this is Clayscapes Pottery's Pitch Black on the sweet little, look at this sweet little cappuccino mug. Just a nice little mug right here. Pitch Black inside and out, dipped. And then I over dipped with my spearmint. And the spearmint creates blues and grays and tans and hints of green. Just look at that handle when it's layered over the blue. Look at that. Homes for sale. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> I love it. I have been getting houses. You all. So wait, I'll tell you, we need three bedroom, three bath, 10 acres and a studio space. You find that for me, we're good. <laughs> In Vermont. Um, although I would be willing to relocate depending on the area. <laughs> so y'all can help me find my house, right? 
suddenly going to be flooded with I'm going to be flooded with, with um, <laughs> All right, and so we have a whole bunch of these dishes that we did tests with. I'm just going to sit them to the side because I want to wait till I get them all out and then we can talk about them because they all are different glazes applied first and then the rim is lustrous jade from Amico. So let's pull out this shelf. Some of these glazes we did live together on this past week's Live at Five broadcast. So you might have seen some of these on that broadcast. Also, we continued to glaze in my private broadcast for premium members, so we did glazing then too, but I spent all day Thursday glazing as well. All right, oh my gosh. Okay, we're, gonna, we're saving them, we're saving them. We're gonna go over them all together. Okay, can we just go, wow? I don't know if you can pick up the subtlety of this, how beautiful this is. So this is my B rolling pin on a slab plate I made with GR pottery forms. And then on the rim is two coats of Mako Flux. That's what's on the rim. Look at what it does. Look at what the rim does. It fluxes, but it has this little peachy tones, peachy and blues and white, little cream in there. That's Wow. Crazy. And so, Christina, we're still talking about the houses. So that's, you know, that's the interesting part of house hunting in Vermont. When people move to our area, they have a lot more income and a lot more money to spend on houses than those of us who live here. And that's just how it is. And that's what we are looking at with the seller's market. So that's why we're kind of waiting. All right, let's talk about pots. So anyhow, Amico Aqua, three coats brushed on. Mako Light Flux on the rim, two coats brushed on. So that turned out uh, about as fabulous as I was hoping it would turn out. And I've got my notes. Let's see, that's not this one, that's the last one. Here we are. So the plate is right here, B plate. Yes. Okay. Aqua with light flux. There you go. So those of you who are asking about using light flux from Mako on aqua gla on Amico glazes, on Amico celadons specifically, yes. And I have more. We'll talk about that. Right? Let's go down. Oh, well, let's just go to this. All right. Inside is Amico Aqua Celadon on the interior of this basket. On the outside is Mako Celadon Bloom. So look, we have the Aqua on the inside and Celadon Bloom on the outside. So you can really compare how they, they look. And then I put the light flux on the top, on the handle, Celadon Bloom on the whole thing on the outside, and then light flux and light flux. Look at how yummy that is. So you get these drippies, you get these melty drippies. And it turned out fabulously. And if we look on the inside, I don't know if you can see, this is the light flux on the aqua celadon. So it still looks nice. I only did two coats of aqua celadon on the inside, two coats of Mako celadon bloom on the outside, and two coats of Mako flux on this basket. And this is a wheel thrown basket from my wheel thrown basket class. So I show you how to throw it, make the handle, alter it, put the bottom on, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. I know. So this basket is gonna sit on my new dinette booth. We're building a little like, um, I guess you call it a dinette, right? Or dining booth in the new porch, which will become basically the entry way to the house. Okay, that's my plan. We'll see if it happens. Um, all right. Oh, <laughs> so this right here is Mako Green Opal. Love this glaze. If you want a really bright, juicy glaze, it reminds me a lot of the Amico Wasabi, although this one's more yellow. So Mako's Green Opal is more yellow. And then on the rim is Aurora Green on that. Just because I wanted to see what would happen if I just put it on the rim. And this is an extruded vase you might be able to tell and i will be teaching you how to make this so we'll be teaching this um in the coming weeks 
you love the basket. I know the basket turned out fabulous, right? It really did. And then I decided to do uh, a cup and pitcher. And these pitchers, I'm going to do a class on too. They're extruded as well. So this is Mako. You might want to shut that door. We got the door open. It's a little loud. Mako lavender mist two coats on first and then Mako muddy waters on top and two coats of lavender mist on the inside as well. But the muddy waters, when you put it over the lavender mist, it does this lovely, and, and no flux, just the muddy waters. It does this beautiful running and fluxing on its own. Look at this patterning we have. It's just gorgeous. And right here at the bottom where we get these little drips and two coats and two coats, that's it. And just keep in mind, Look, I got a little dripping, you see right here. I'll be using my Diamond Core Tools grinding disc, cleaning this up later today so that I can have smooth bottoms because we know how we like our smooth bottoms. And I did a cup in the same glaze combo just because I like it <laughs> and I think it's beautiful. So how cute, right? So can you get my glazes in the UK? Clayscapes Pottery sells them and they're out of the US. Now, if you want your supplier in the UK to carry Clayscapes Pottery glazes, the way to make that happen is you contact your clay supplier and say, hey, I love these glazes by this company. Can you get them? And if they get enough requests, then they will carry them. But you can always order directly from Clayscapes, but you have to pay shipping over to the UK. And I know that's really expensive. So. Um, what do I do with the bottom of the basket? Sand it. Yeah, after, sure, right, yeah. So always in making pottery, if you have glazed drips, if you have kiln wash that sticks to the bottom of your pieces, if for some reason when you were making it, you didn't clean it very well, you just sand it. That's what we all do. So you can use a grinding disc that goes on your pottery wheel that Diamond Core Tools makes, or sanding pads, or they even make little rotary tool attachments that can go on a rotary tool and you can use that to grind it down. It's part of the pottery process. It's not a big deal and you always want to sand your bottoms. And I did do a live broadcast I think two weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe, showing how to use Diamond Core Tools um, grinding discs and I also did one about a month ago using the sanding pads to smooth the bottoms. So that's just part of the pottery process. All right, I'm going to show you one of my new favorite combos. I think this is F. How far down with the muddy waters on that? Two thirds the way down. Uh, we'll go back. That, they, it fluxes a lot. I only went two thirds the way down this pitcher. And look at, do you see the drips that are happening? Those drips like melted and ran down it. That's why you wanna leave space at the bottom because even though I did that, I still have that little bit to clean up. It's not a big deal. We just grind it down. Okay. Smooth bottom pottery. Smooth bottom pottery, right? Uh, somebody better grab that. I'm not going to take it. I think it's great, but um, someone better grab that name. <laughs> My new favorite combo. I think this is everybody's new favorite combo. This is Blue Opal from Mako with Night Moth on top. Oh my goodness. How yummy would a little mix up a little something in this pitcher, have a little cup. Just sit out there and have a nice refreshing drink. Ooh, got a little drippy right there, but it didn't go all the way down. So that's nice. It looks like Starry Night. Oh my gosh, I love it. Ah, so I'll teach you how to make these pictures. That's coming up um, as well. I did another piece with this combo because I'm so over the moon. Look at the yummy drippies. I don't know if you can see inside the rim. Oh yeah. Yeah, so nice. It does, thanks. So I see a few people asking about my Clayshare caps. You can get that on the clayshare.market.com under Clayshare merchandise. And this is our vintage, is this our classic style hat? We have two style hats. One that just says Clayshare like this and the other that has our Clayshare logo. So I, I wear this hat everywhere. It's like my favorite. And plus, since it's demo day, I gotta wear a hat to protect my, my hair because I don't want to get glass and other construction debris in my hair. All right, that's it for the top shelf. Whew! 
We're going to go ahead and go to the next shelf down. Let me pull these out. Oh, this is a good shelf. I can, I can see what's on it. So excited. I know a little cup and pitcher. How nice is that? And although I already have a bunch of pitcher classes on Clay Share, and that cup is from Throwing a Tumbler class, so that's already out there. But I do have hand building. Um, I think I, I did like a juice cup maybe a wine cup, but a bunch of different cups on there. Bunch of cup classes. Oh, there's another one with the blue opal. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I can't even, I just, oh, and those are all the test tubes we were talking about. So we'll get to those in a minute. Um, let's just, let's start with this little guy. This was a piece that I did the video showing how I applied the underglaze transfer to the side. And I put that up on Facebook and Instagram yesterday. And it's really simple. Once the piece had been bisque fired, I applied the underglaze transfer and then just peel it off. And then if you're applying clear glaze, you can either dip it, one dip, or if you're brushing on, just brush one coat in one direction, wait for it to dry all the way, and then do your second coat. But this is a variation of my circle slab vase. What we did is instead of doing it this way, usually the vase is this way and it's cut here so you can put flowers in it and it sits on your shelf. Well, I just made the back taller, put a little hole in it so that I can hang it and now I have a little wall vase or wall pocket. Love this, right? Oh, so going back to the blue opal night moth, two layers of blue opal. Look, I got a little drippy there, that's okay two layers of blue opal, two layers of night moth. If for some reason your night moth is a little thin, you might wanna do an extra third layer just up at the top. But again, I only applied it two thirds the way down and it will melt and run, although it doesn't melt and run as much as Muddy Waters. Muddy Waters melts and runs like crazy. Are, are both of those Mako? Yes, those are all Mako. Those, those, yes, they're Mako. Let me, uh. Mako Lavender Mist, Mako Muddy Waters, Mako Blue Opal, Mako Night Moth. And you can get them from Clayscapes Pottery and you can save, what do we got, 10% 10, 10 off, I think, if you use the code EXPLORE10. So, that's all Mako, all Mako awesomeness. And another, same combo. This is gonna be a class, I, and I'm filming this one next week, but it won't be out until the week after because I've got the urn class I think that's this week's class but I'm not sure um, I might jump ahead but this is a woven basket class we'll be doing now I have some sanding on the bottom and you notice how the bottom's not glazed because if I glazed it and put it on the shelf it would have stuck and the other option is you can fire it on kiln stilts but it could also sag if you do that so since this is always going to sit on a surface no one's going to be looking at the bottom no one's gonna see that it's unglazed, so I'm fine with it not being glazed. But again, two coats of blue opal, and then on top, two coats of night moth. I love it! So this is a hand building class. You're gonna love it. Actually, this was an extruded, but we'll, I'll show you how to do it without an extruder too. So if you have an extruder, we'll do it. No extruder, I'll show you a little hack so you can make it. All right, this, how great is this going to be with like some little warm muffins in here? You know, put a little nap, little, uh, little napkin in there, a little linen napkin, and then wrap up your muffins to keep them warm. And you can sit out there and have your breakfast. Muffins in here, juice in here, right? Awesome little set. So we'll be doing that very soon. That'll be the next hand building class. I wasn't going to tell you. I was going to keep it a secret, but you all know me in secrets, right? They, they don't exist. <laughs> Baskets are so fun. Um, I've got, a, got the wheel throwing one. I think that's the only hand building one that I've done. All right, let's go into these plates here and then we will pull out those tubes and we'll go through the tubes because there's a ton of information on all those tubes and it's the, the kind of stuff you wanna have for reference. And then when you go to glaze your pots, you'll have that on hand to use. Okay, this is 
Amico Cherry Blossom Celadon, three coats. Nice, pretty, beautiful, light pink Celadon. Now this was fired to cone five. If you go to cone six, your pink is gonna fade and you're not gonna get the pink. For whatever reason, Amico Celadons, they like three coats and they like cone five. Just, just sharing that. I did put Mako Light Flux two coats on the rim. Don't know if you can see, it's very subtle. Very, very subtle. Can you all see that? <laughs> Patty's seeing baskets in different shapes and sizes. So the colors on the basket were Mako Blue Opal and Mako Night Moth. That's the colors on this. Mako Blue Opal and Mako Night Moth. Blue Opal on the entire thing, two coats. Night Moth over on the rim, two coats. So that the key is you have to put the Night Moth on top of the Blue Opal to get that beautiful starry night blue effect. So this, it's, it's a little subtle, but it's very sweet. So I'm, I'm happy with it. So not, not complaining. And then I did Amico Poppy. I think I did three coats of Poppy. And I also did Mako Light Flux, two coats. Not that noticeable. It's subtle. Again, very, very subtle. But you can see it, right? It's just, it's just a little something. It looks like a little snow or something on the, on the edge there with that. All right. Oh my gosh. Are we going to go into these tubes now? Oh, the tubes are going to be a lot. I haven't forgotten about these. We'll get back to these. They're on the list, but I got to get them all out first. All right. The tubes. I need my notebook. <laughs> I have to tell you the tubes could be a broadcast all by themselves because I did 21 tube tests. Um, no, I did 25. I did 25 tests. So this is a layering test to see what happens when I put one glaze on top of another. So this is my cobblestone and my Oribe on top. That is a really sweet combo right there. Um, it's very traditional farmhouse. I used to do this all the time when I did art fairs and craft shows. And I, this line I did, I'd have cobblestone on first and then I did my Oribe on one line and the next color line was spearmint and then my lake blue. So you could have a dark green, a mint green, and then a denim blue. And bet between those three colors, those were like my staple colors when I was doing functional pottery. So, love that. Okay, so that, that's good. I almost need to have a little table set up over here for this because I'm not gonna have room. No, you're right. So we're going to have to go kind of quick. I think we'll do a separate talking about this. Um, my cranberry on top of cobblestone. I had never tested that before, but oh yeah. yeah. yeah you there we go. If my face is in the broadcast, it, um, it goes to my face. I'm stepping out. Focus on that. <laughs> Don't look at my face. <laughs> so cranberry on cobblestone. Uh, cranberry on spearmint, um, interesting, right? Interesting stuff happening up top. Woo, okay, don't hate it. Um, my, let's double check, number 10. This is lake blue, and I don't think the camera can really show very well the blueness of this. Lake blue on top of pitch black. That's a good combo. And so I do this so that I have all these visual references. When I go to glaze my next batch of mugs and bowls and plates, I can just say, well, I wanna do a whole line looking like this. And you really know what it looks like on a vertical surface. So you get the information as how it's gonna melt and how they're gonna look on top of each other. Can you see texture through blue opal? We're gonna to get to that because I did some textured pieces with blue opal and we'll get to that in a minute. So good question though. This one is 14, so that is my Oribe, my Oribe with cream on top. I've got to step off to the side so that I'm not in the camera. This is a crazy good combo. 
that showing it? Is that nice? It goes all frosty and yummy. I love it. I love it. So Oribe cream, Clayscapes cream. You had to write Oribe down on your wish list. Did I do one with cranberry with cream? Oh, I don't know if I put cream on cranberry. Now, oh, I did. I got one in here. Okay, we'll see what that looks like. This is number 15. That is pitch black, pitch black on top of my Oribe. Um, it's all right. It's okay. Uh, I probably wouldn't do it for myself, but yeah. So I have that. That's the other reason why we do this. So now I know I don't really love that combo. And I see some questions, questions about the tubes. Um, these were dip on glazes, so I dip them. But when it, sometimes they're brush on, the Makos are brush on. And these were extruded, yes, these test tubes. In my, um, I think it's in my intro to extruding class, I talk about how I use these tubes all the time for tests because you get a really good surface to see how your glaze is gonna melt. Now this is pitch black on cranberry. If you like black and like a beautiful cranberry color, this, that right there, that's pretty sweet. That's nice. But I wouldn't know that unless I did a test. Um, let's see, number four, cobblestone and lake blue. Always, if you wanna do a line of country inspired pottery, like farmhouse pottery, this right here, cobblestone, lake blue. I don't know if you get much more country than that, maybe with the spearmint on top of the cobblestone, but this combo, fabulous. And the Oribe and the Cranberry will be available next month for pre-order. So what do we got on this? This is Cranberry. It says it should be cream, but that's not cream. I think I dipped it in something else. That's not cream. That, I think I dipped another one in pitch black. This is what happens on glazing day. Ooh, my cobblestone with pitch black. That's nice if you like black and gray. That's a very nice combo. Kind of modern, very simple. Um, also farmhouse chic a little bit. I know we often think of whites and neutrals, but the black and gray can be very nice. All right, we gotta pick it up so we can get through. Oh, that's unexpected and that's kind of lovely. So my chun blue on cranberry. I did not expect that. Ooh. I did not. Uh, so my cranberry, it has tin in it. And some of you took Drew Seymour's Practical Glaze Chemistry Workshop. Tin can be fussy, it really can. It doesn't necessarily like to be layered with other colors, but apparently it likes my chun. So my cranberry and my chun, yeah, nice. And where it breaks, you get this like beautiful tan color. That's just how these glazes behave. And I see some questions. This is all B-Mix, except I have one piece that's not in the kiln. And I do use kiln wash, yes. Oh my gosh, I don't know what this is. Let's look it up. It's number nine. What is number nine? Mm -mm -mm. That, that's my spearmint on pitch black. But it looks so good on a tall vertical form. That, look at that. Nice. I love what's happening here. Oh my gosh, we still got so many more. Oh, oh, is that my cranberry on pitch black? Uh, I did not expect, I don't know if the camera can really show you the subtleties of that, but that's 22, 22, no 23, yeah, that's cranberry on top of pitch black. It, that black it is black cherry. <gasps> so those who are in Drew's workshop, we were trying to come up with a black cherry. Here you go, you want black cherry? Clayscapes pitch black with my cranberry on top. You can't get the cranberry yet unless we really hound Drew at Clayscapes to release it, which I think we kind of are. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you guys see that? There you go. I don't know if the lights can pick up how amazing that one is. And then this is my spearmint with pitch black on top. Ooh, 
Pitch black went kind of blue on top of spearmint. Nice. The pitch black, um, all these are made by Clayscapes. Uh, so some of them are mine. Pitch black and cream are not my glazes. Those are Clayscapes glazes, but the other ones are ones that I've developed. My spearmint on, co on cobblestone. Um, remember how I was saying if you're looking for like farmhouse colors, something that would be really lovely are these two. Cobblestone with either spearmint or lake blue on top. How sweet are those? They're, they're fabulous. They look good on everything. Okay, keep going, because we got more. Uh, cream on cobblestone? Yeah, put that in the farmhouse collection, right? These, Wow. look, these three, and you've got a line. You've got a production line of pottery if you wanted to come out with one. And then you just offer these colors, cream, your mint green and your, your blue, right? So how great would those be? So these are, you know, you might not be interested in doing a line of pottery, but you might. Um, this is cobblestone on pitch black, nothing happening, but I wanted to see. So that's why we did that. What do we got over here? Um, 22 is my chun on Oribe. So dipped in my Oribe first, then my chun on top. That, that's nice. That is very nice. Super happy with that, okay? Um, I might sit down and do a broadcast and we'll just talk about these at, holy cats, what is happening there? Yeah, I think you need to do a... Uh, yeah, there's, there's too much to... Um, this is my chun with spearmint on top. What? I can't believe I've never done this combo before. Wow. Is that beach house to you? Yeah. That, that's beach house. That screams beach house to me. Wow. Beach glass. Beach glass. Ooh. Right? And then this one. What one's this? This is my Oribe with lake blue on top. Oh. Uh, still beach house. Right? So we've got the farmhouse and we've got the beach house collection. <laughs> depending on where you live, right? Um, <laughs> you've got all the choices. Wow, yeah, we'll have to sit down and talk about that. Um, this is probably going to be pitch black on lake blue, and it is pitch black on lake blue, and then this one is, I told you there was a lot of tests, lake blue with cream on top. So, lake blue with black, lake blue with cream. So you get the I know the tubes are a great idea. They're very easy to glaze. They don't take up a lot of space. And then you have these great references afterwards. And it, I use B-Mix, so that's the clay I use to make my test tubes. So I know exactly how these glazes are gonna work on my B-Mix, right? Don't use a clay, <laughs> don't use a different clay to do your test tubes. Use the same clay that you work with, because if not, you're gonna end up with unreliable results, right? So this one right here is my chun with Oribe. And this one is pitch black with my chun on top. And I don't think the camera's picking it up. My chun usually pops a lot more on the pitch black, but for whatever reason, I think my, my chun is too thin. It should be much more opaly. And then we have one left on this what is that? That's spearmint with cream. Spearmint with cream. Yeah, that's nice. That's very nice. Wow. Crazy, right? Lots of good stuff. That was 25 test tubes. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a real lot. Um, I will do a more in-depth discussion about those glazes because I think there's a lot of information to unpack there. And... We, we could do it on Live at Five this week. I was going to do, ooh, ooh, um, look at that. Can you guys see those? Look at those. I was going to do lusters, but we might save luster for um, the week after. Maybe we'll talk about glazes. Uh, although my Oribe and Cranberry are not available yet, so I don't want to 
get you all too excited about a glaze you can't get. So we might hold that for um, closer to October, but we'll see. All right, getting close to the end. Here is a platter made with GR pottery forms. The glaze here is Amico Aqua brushed on three coats. Mako Celadon Bloom on the handles because why not? And then Mako Light Flux, two coats all the way around on the rim. I'm undecided about it. <laughs> They're all great glazes. Um, I don't know if necessarily I'd put them all together on a tray. Remember I did that basket? And that basket was fabulous with these combos, but maybe not on a tray. I don't know. I think the blooms on the handles are a little, uh, maybe a little intense. I don't know. But it's cute. It's a cute tray. So we got that going. All right, put that over there. And then we've got more combos. Okay. So this is Amico Poppy Celadon, three coats with two coats of Mako Light Flux. Now look at the difference. This really popped. I put two heavy coats of that light flux and you can really see on the rim. And because I like this one too, I did Tangelo, that's Amico's Tangelo Celadon, three coats, and then on the rim, two coats of Mako Light Flux. Look how sweet. And then we have that larger one we did in the cherry blossom. Right, so we did a set of three that would stack together and look really cute. So my purpose in doing that was to show how the Mako Light Flux can go on basically any glaze. And what it does, it just melts and it changes the color a little bit, but it, it, gives, it gives a little, um, little something of interest. All right, let's talk about these test plates that had texture because I got a bunch here. You can never go wrong with light flux. I think you're right. Absolutely 100% right. Okay, so we did a bunch of little plates with texture and we wanted to see how these glazes would look on a textured piece. And also we were gonna put another glaze on the rim. And so that's what we did. So blue opal from Mako and lustrous jade. Two coats of blue opal, two coats of blue opal's Mako. The lustrous jade is Amico. We were, we were talking about, does it show texture? I'm gonna let you be the judge. Yes, right? Two coats of blue opal, we're seeing lots of texture, lots of gorgeous texture. And then the rim is lustrous jade. Gorgeous combo, really fabulous. So if you have these glazes from Mako and Amico, look at what you get for a result. And no problems with texture at all. So blue opal is a big fat yes, big check mark next to blue opal. Use it on texture? Absolutely. Yep, use it on texture. All right, now number two is the abalone, which is a Mako glaze. Um, we can see texture, it's a little subtle. It's a tiny bit subtle. And then lustrous jade on the rim. Um, I'm gonna go out and say, not my favorite combo, but it's not, I don't hate it. It's just not my favorite. So that's the Abalone from Mako with Amico Lustrous Jade. All of these have Lustrous Jade on the rim. And then our next one is Mako Pink Opal right here. Now, Pink Opal shows texture fabulously. No problems at all. I'm seeing lots of gorgeous texture. Lustrous jade on the rim, I think it would have been better with light flux. I really do. But if you like pink and kind of jadey green colors, this might be for you. And then our next one is Mako Lavender Mist, two coats. Now we still see texture, but it's very, very subtle. It's very subtle. Um, lustrous jade again on the rim. Nice combo, but it's, it will not make your texture pop. It's very subtle. It's still pretty though. I really like lavender mist. And then what do we got now down here? We have got 
frosted lemon with lustrous jade. I wanted to see if frosted lemon would show our texture. It does. It does not pop as much as the blue opal, but you, it's, it's subtle again, but you still see it. So it's really nice. Yeah, the texture on this is all my vintage geometric rolling pin, vintage geo. I love it too. I'm glad you like it. So this one is Mako Green Opal with lustrous jade on the rim. The green opal, it, it does show the texture. Again, it's subtle. So I see the folks on Instagram. Yeah, let me just pause for a sec. Everybody on Instagram, I'm also broadcasting on Facebook, on YouTube, on Clayshare.com, on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku, and on the Clayshare apps. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I have two cameras, and they, because all the other streams are going through that camera, um, I'm talking to them. But I once in a while pop over and say hey to the folks on Instagram. But check out the other streams because we have a picture-in-picture -picture situation over there. So anyhow, the green opal, uh, a good combo, but I think maybe I'll just pull you all this way a little more, and that way you can see it better. There you go. Uh, so yeah, green opal for texture. Yeah, you could do it. It'd be all right. It'd work. And then the last one I think I did is the Coral Sands. This is also a Mako glaze, so it's a corally color. And Lustrous Jade on the rim. Again, I think Light Flux with Coral Sands would be gorgeous. Because remember, that Light Flux um, has like peachy undertones. Let me grab the basket. Grab it. So, do you see the, the handle here? Those peachy, pinky tones, that's from the Light Flux. So the Light Flux is kind of a white color on its own with that little pinky coming through. So I think on these with the coral sands and um, the frosted lemon, I think it, it would have looked better. But it's not a never going to do it again. It's just I think I would have liked it better. That's all. So one coat would show your texture better. Yeah, that's a good question, Marissa. The um, You just want to make sure you get good coverage. But yeah, one coat would show your texture better, but sometimes it's a little patchy when you only apply one coat. All right, we've got one more shelf to go through, and, and then I get to go back to demolition. So let's get these out. Oh, <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> I did something. <laughs> I think I started it in the live broadcast, but I finished it um, on my own. And I might wait and make you all wait for that one. Um, okay, we did this in, oh yes, oh my, hello, yes. We did this in the live broadcast, this little syrup pourer, which is a hand-built class. Really fun, simple little thing to make. Texture on here is my mushroom rolling pin. I love the mushrooms. Uh, glaze is Amico Lavender Celadon, three coats first on the entire thing. So this is, Amico Lavender Celadon. And then on top of that, we put Mako Blue Hydrangea, two here, so I'd say a third of the way down, two coats, and then on the very top, I did two coats of Mako Light Flux. Oh, I love the Lavender Celadon with Blue Hydrangea. Now, I usually use Lavender Mist from Mako, but I tried the Amico this time, and oh, oh, that's a keeper. That's a good one. Um, and so I see some questions, Mako and Amico, any problems mixing? I've not found any issues yet, but you never know, right? You always have to test to see. And, um, you know, I do think that, oh my gosh, testing on a small piece like this is a great visual reference. You can do a test tube like we did earlier, but this has all this texture. Plus when it, oh my gosh, look at light flux. I don't know if you can see light flux on Amico Lavender Celadon. Just those two together is what's happening on the inside. Ooh, that's very good. <laughs> I'm really happy with this, obviously. And why shouldn't I be? Okay. Um, okay, we'll do this bowl. This is the only clay other than Bee Mix in the kiln. This is Georgie's Dark Chocolate Trail Mix Clay. Now, the actual clay body is on the foot ring. That's this here. 
This has white underglaze applied to it, which I carved through for my signature. We'll do it this way so you can actually read it. But this is the clay body, that gorgeous, it is dark chocolate. Now this clay really likes cone four, cone five. Don't take it to cone six or you'll get bloating. This clay is not a cone six. Ancient copper from Amico. I think we did the bottom two thirds and then Amico textured turquoise on top and on the inside. Try not to glare everybody out. I know, lavender and galaxy Janet. I will have to try that. I will have to try that. And Marissa's asking, do I use always do two coats of flux? Um, I found one coat doesn't really do it. And, and we'll, can, we can talk about that because I have an example with one coat of flux and the same glaze with two coats of flux. And it makes a difference, it really does. Waiting for that to dry and do the extra second. Oh my goodness gracious, right? Ah, so this is from Georgie Ceramic. Um, they're in Oregon and they have this yummy dark chocolate trail mix clay. And if you um, live out that way and use them to get your clay and you haven't tried this yet, give it a try. There's a lot of other glazes that are great on dark clay. I don't use dark clay a lot. I usually use light clays, but um, there's nothing wrong with dark clays. It's just my preference, right? So Amico Celadons do fade at cone six. If you put four coats of the Amico Celadons on, it might show up more, but I found the cherry blossom and the lavender Celadon. This, this was cone five. Do you see how beautifully purple that is? If you take that to six, it's gonna go more gray. It's not gonna be as purple. So you wanna keep that in mind. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, this is again, knowing your clay, knowing your glazes, knowing your firing, all these things will give you the best possible results. It's a, it's a combination of many things, right? Okay, should we look at the cone? Let's look at the cone pack. So here's our cone pack from the top. This is how we measure heat work. This is how we know what we got to. Remember, cone four, cone five, cone six. We were going for cone five. The top got a perfect cone five. Here is our bottom, cone four, cone five, cone six. Again, the bottom got a perfect cone five. Do you see how even these are? They're dead even. It's exactly the same temperature on the top as it is in the bottom. And that's really important because I know that whatever piece I put in the bottom of my kiln and the piece I put at the top of my kiln, the glazes are gonna melt the exact same way. They're gonna melt at the same temperature. So if I have a piece glazed with the same glaze that's on the bottom, and then I have, a, like say there are two mugs I made, right? Same glaze. One on the bottom, one on the top. When I pull them out, they will match. The glazes will have melted to the same temperature and I know they will look the same. So right on, L&L &L kilns. They make great kilns and I have to tell you, I have never found a better kiln. I had a Scut before. Scuts are good kilns, don't get me wrong. And other companies, Paragon, there's other companies out there that make great kilns. I've uh, been making pottery for 20 years and for electric kilns, I love my L&L, &L. you know? It's just like cars, right? We love our cars. I love my kiln. So um, let's look at, oh, whoa, what did I do here? Um, I don't know, but let's talk about it. I wrote it down, planters. Uh, okay, this is, this is kind of crazy. This is an extruded piece. Um, and what I'm, when I do the class on the big vase, we'll talk about these two in that class, but it's just an extruded form. And this is Mako Green Opal, two coats all the way around, and then Mako Light Flux. That's just the Mako Light Flux two coats. And that's what did that drippy, and also it kind of went red, pinky, pink. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. I didn't expect it to do that, but I like it. I'm running out of room. <laughs> Story of our lives, right? Amico Cherry Blossom, three coats, and then Mako Light Flux. I find it very interesting. The Light Flux on the Cherry Blossom doesn't really do much for me. I think it's all right. I probably won't do it again. Not a problem, just this is how we discover what we like and don't like, right? It just wasn't as um, interesting to me. 
what else do we have down here? Oh, this is nice. What one's this one? Um, this one is, we'll get there. The little extruded planter. This is frosted lemon with light flux. Now, you know how I did those textured plates? The one with frosted lemon, let me grab it. Frosted lemon on the plate, frosted lemon on the little planter. Lustrous jade on the rim here. Mako Light Flux on the rim. I like the Mako Light Flux on the rim better than the Lustrous Jade, but the Lustrous, well, I can't say that because green and yellow are nice, but nice right there. So I see some questions, what do I do with my pieces? Well, a lot of these pieces are going to be future classes on Clayshare, so I keep them for that, and they live in the gallery so that I have them as reference. Because I primarily teach, you know, I have over 300 full-length classes on Clayshare that I need these references to share with my students when we do classes together. Um, the little pieces, like the dishes that are glaze tests, I usually do those um, as little giveaways and stuff, gifts for people and things. I do sometimes sell my work, but um, not as much as I used to. I was a production potter for almost 10 years, so all I did was make pots day in, day out, and just trundle all over the place selling them, galleries, art fairs, craft shows, you know the whole thing. Um, but since I started Clayshare and I teach all the time, I, I don't have time to do that. It would take away from my teaching. But I do have sales sometimes, and I do have open studio events where people can actually come to my studio, usually a weekend twice a year, and the pieces are available then, some of the pieces. Coral Sands from Mako with Light Flux. What'd I say? I said this would be better, Coral Sands with Light Flux would be better than Lustrous Jade, right? And, is that right? Let's take a look. Coral Sands on a textured plate with Lustrous Jade. Coral Sands on a planter with Mako Light Flux. So nice, right? The frosted lemon is made by Mako, as is the coral sands. And there's the bottom of that little guy too. And we have two more pieces. And then, whew, um, oh yeah, let's do this. Okay, we were talking about how many coats of light flux and why I'd use two versus one. And this is a perfect example. This little dish is Amico Poppy Celadon three coats, and then Mako Light Flux, one coat on the rim. Same thing, two coats of Light Flux on the rim. See what happens when we do two coats of the Light Flux versus one coat over here? So yeah, put that second coat on. You'll be happier. You'll thank me for it. You'll send me a message and say, Jess, I put two coats of the Mako Light Flux. It was amazing. And here's a refire. This was a Amico um, Chino glaze, and I honestly can't remember which one I did. I'd have to go look back through firings ago. And I put on top a matte glaze. I was not happy. I refired it with the Mako Light Flux, and it just made it glossy and ran. So I like it better now. Still, I prefer, <laughs> if only I'd known about this when I did this because this is still the mushrooms, but I like this better. Hmm. I did not know, because that test hadn't happened. All right, one, one, last, one last piece, let's see. When I fired a cone 10, yeah. Um, I, don't, I won't be firing to cone 10 in my gas kiln this year. Maybe, maybe in 20, 2020 has been a year, right? Maybe in 2021, we'll have to wait and see. Ha ha, this, this. I was super jazzed about this mug, um, and you can see why. This is Amico Cherry Blossom Celadon, which on the plate was just kind of meh, right? We put the light flux on the plate. Well, I put a layer, two coats, so that's just three coats of, um, I think it's three coats. Let's check. Wait. I want to give you the correct information. B mug. Where did I put B mug? There it is, three coats of Amico Cherry Blossom, inside and out, on the entire thing. 
two coats of Celadon Bloom on the top quarter, right? And then on the very top, two coats of the Light Flux. So the Celadon Bloom on top of the Amico Cherry Blossom, so that's Mako Celadon Bloom on top of the Amico Cherry Blossom. Yeah, with the Light Flux, super good. And what I want to show you, cherry blossom on a plate with just light flux, two coats, just doesn't do anything for me. I should have put the Celadon Bloom, right? Put a little strip of Celadon Bloom on this rim on this plate. I might refire this. I might go ahead and apply, not, not today, but the next time I do a glaze firing, I might do this plate with Celadon Bloom on the rim, on top of the cherry blossom, and see what happens. Because this, I, I like pinks, I like, I like purples, I like pastel colors, I like, you know. So for me, this is in my wheelhouse. This is the best, right? Although the Night Moth with the Blue Opal is crazy good too. Uh, I see on Facebook, what constitutes a top fan? That's a Facebook designation, not, we do not designate that, those of you watching on Facebook. Facebook decides that, and I have no idea what they use to determine that. I guess it's just how many times you comment or like on a post of ours. That's all. We have nothing to do with that. I want you to be aware. I think you're all top fans, so um, no matter what Facebook says. So that turned out yummy. Cherry blossom on brown clay is nice. I've never tried it. Um, Brett wants to know how to reglaze. Sure. So what I will do, I will just go ahead and take this piece. I will get some rubbing alcohol and wipe the rim down because I've touched it. I could have transferred some oils from my fingers to it and I don't want that or there could be some dust on here. So you'll wipe it down clean with rubbing alcohol, once it's dried, like five minutes later, just apply whatever glaze you want to apply. You, I usually brush it on and let that dry. Sometimes it doesn't dry all the way while you're waiting. Just put it back in the kiln and fire it during your next glaze firing. That's it. Just refire it. Put it in the next time you're doing a glaze and you will get some difference, just like this mug. This was a refire. So the first time I fired it, the glaze on the rim was very, very dry, very matte. So I put Mako Light Flux, I just brushed one coat on the rim and down the handle on top of that other glaze and refired it. Just set it in the kiln and fired it again. And you can see it, it turned out much better. I'm really happy with that. So this is like a yummy coffee mug, very, very much like warm, Look at that. Ah, oh, it looks good. I like this glaze, but it's not my favorite just because of my own personal taste. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just we all have things we like, right? All right, so there we go. There was a lot of pots in there. And uh, let's see the inside of that. So you can see where the cherry blossom has melted, the um, melted with the Celadon Bloom, right? Celadon Bloom over the cherry blossom. And the inside does look darker. That would probably be lighting in the studio, the way I have the lights. But I don't know if that helps. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. The purple combo, yeah, we can go over that. This right here is Amico Lavender Celadon, three coats applied to the entire thing. Then Mako Blue Hydrangea, the top third, two coats. And then Mako Light Flux, two the rim, I just did a band maybe an eighth of an inch down and on the tippy top. So that's what this combo is. Gorgeous. Fire to cone five though. Go to cone six, you're gonna lose your purple. Whew, I think that's it. Does refiring change the color of the original piece? It will change it, yes, it will. So just be aware when you're refiring, it won't be the same. It might be better, it might be worse. You have to decide if you love the piece the way it is, don't refire it, leave it be. I didn't like that at all. I didn't care whatever happened to it. it I was not happy, so I reglazed that rim and fired it, making the decision that whatever I got would be better, and it is, it's better. So I'm happier with it. 
All right, my cranberry glaze, yes. That will be out, it'll be available for pre-order in October. Those test tubes that we looked at, um, we, we have to unpack that info. We have to sit down with those and really talk about those. We'll do that in a separate broadcast. There's too much there. We can't do it because I could go back and go into those and it would be, um, you love the refired mug, Charlotte, right? And I think, here's the thing. So Kevin would love this. This is Kevin's glaze-like color palette. He loves these. This is mine. And this is why pottery is amazing because two hand-built mugs made the same way, different texture, little mushroom, little bees on this one, glazed and glazes I love, glazed and glazes he loves. And honestly, you can make everybody happy because you can glaze things to match anybody's taste, right? So if this was sitting on a shelf and this one was sitting on a shelf and I was like, oh, I'm going to buy one, which one would I get? Yeah, I'd get this one because that's me. But I know Kevin would buy this one, right? And I, it's, it's a really gorgeous mug. Don't think that it's not. Um, it's just what I, I, I don't like lima beans either, but you know, other people do. So I think they're fine, <laughs> right? It's that kind of thing. <laughs> All right. Um, so I always like to do a thing where I pick a piece that I think is the most fabulous from the kiln. Yes, this kind of would be it. But honestly, the biggest surprise to me was this little guy. I had no idea what this was going to look like. And this turned out so good. It really did. I, I love it. The other thing that turned out amazing was this basket. <gasps> yeah, that turned out amazing too. And we'll talk about this in the class in a couple weeks when that comes out. And um, all right, that's all I got. Does it make a difference that way or did you do something wrong? I didn't, um, I didn't catch the rest of that comment. So the color, your colors are like Kevin's. You like the browns and dark greens, right? We all have our favorites. Um, so my glazes are sold through Clayscapes Pottery and they are just listed. My spearmint, I don't think says my name. I think it just says spearmint. My lake blue, I think just says lake blue. Jess's Chun is sold under Jess's Chun. Cobblestone is just listed as cobblestone. I think my Oribe and my cranberry will just be listed as Oribe and cranberry. And, um, you know, they'll be there soon. I do a hold yes. So I'll just, I did mention at the beginning of the broadcast, and if you're just joining or you came in later, I talked all about the firing and the schedule and everything, but this was a cone five firing done on medium speed with a one and a half hour preheat at the beginning and a 13 minute hold at the end. So that's what I fired it to for these results using Laguna Bee Mix, Mako glazes, Amico glazes, and Clayscapes Pottery glazes. That was all that was in this kiln. Whew, was that everything? <laughs> it is. So now I'm off for demolition day because we're gonna continue ripping the porch off our home and rebuilding the new one. And I will post pictures on my personal page of that progress because um, it's crazy. It's just, you know, what else do you do on Labor Day weekend besides rip off a porch and build a brand new addition to your home? That's what you do, it's right? Labor day. Is, right, is it not Labor, Labor day? day? Am I not supposed to be laboring this weekend? I think I am. <laughs> um, can you use glazes on ceramics? Yes, these, these, yes, you can. Um, these are used, yes. Um, I'm not sure exactly if you have, you know, more questions for me. The glazes on ceramics sounds like there's more information there that I need to answer that. As always, you can message me, you can email me, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Do get um, hundreds of messages a day, so, it sometimes takes a while, and if I lose your message, I'm sorry, I must apologize. If you really need to get a hold of me and I didn't get back to you, message me again. I don't mind. You can message me as many times, but it sometimes takes a while for me to find the messages because they come from everywhere. So I just wanted to put that out there for you guys. All right, so um, how big is my studio? Never big enough, right? It's a two-story barn with a kiln shed on the back, and there's still not enough room. <laughs> I need a bigger studio by far, but that's for another day. All right, everybody. Um, okay. Oh, oh, I want to, I want to answer that. What does a hold mean? A hold means when your kiln gets to the top temperature, you hold it there. So when this gets to 2167, 
I hold the kiln at 2167 and I can program that into my kiln because it's computerized so I can put that in and it will hold it there for as long as I want. And as you're holding, you're having more heat work on your pieces, which is what causes glazes to melt and flux. And it does bring your temperature up. So by doing a hold, I'm getting a really solid cone five. If I didn't do a hold, it might not be quite as, um, as solid of a cone five. It might be a little lower in temperature, but, and we'll talk about that. I think I've done more broadcasts and classes talking about using a hold than we did today. All right, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go rip a porch off and build an addition. Bye everybody, have a fabulous Labor Day weekend wherever you are, enjoy your day. I'll be back Wednesday for a live broadcast, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And we are gonna either be talking about those clayscapes, my glazes from clayscapes, or doing lusters. I don't know which. Just have to wait and see how the porch goes, I guess. <laughs> All right, bye everybody. I'll catch you later. Ha, ha, ha.